And let's all do it together. Unless you have health problems, if you, if you are willing to take this challenge, we're just gonna hold our breath for 15 seconds. Take a deep breath in, go to take a deep breath out now. Exhale, 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 exhale it out. Stop breathing, time us. Remember, you can breathe anytime you want to if you need to. I just want you to notice how this feels. Three, two, one, breathe. So holding your breath, obviously that's a little bit of a willpower challenge. Um, some of you maybe you need to hold your breath for two minutes to feel it, but I did not want anyone passing out. So would you believe that this ability to hold your breath is one of the best predictors of people's ability to succeed at difficult goals? Psychologists call this distress tolerance the ability to stay put when things get uncomfortable. So I wanna tell you now about a small intervention that teaches people how to sort of hold their breath, but not exactly, how to basically ride out physical discomfort that gets in the way of making a difficult change. I'm gonna tell you about two different studies that are basically using the same technique, so you can kind of pick your willpower challenge here. The first I call the, the torture chamber. And this was a study of smokers who wanted to quit but had been unable to. And the researchers asked the smokers to abstain from smoking for 24 hours, sort of a first challenge, and then to come into the laboratory with a fresh, unopened pack of their favorite brand of cigarettes. So all the smokers show up, they've got their pack, they are desperate for a smoke, and they even like carbon monoxide tested them to make sure they hadn't smoked. So they had all, they were really, they were ready for a cigarette. They all get um, they're seated at a long table and asked to put away all distractions except for a lighter or a match and their cigarettes. So you've got a bunch of smokers now, they're ready. And then the experimenter is about to begin the process of allowing them to smoke. And she says through actually a microphone like that, you hear this voice that says, take out your pack of cigarettes. And everyone does, they're all excited, woo, stop. Okay, they have to wait two minutes now and they're not allowed to do anything except look at their pack of cigarettes. Pull off the cellophane, okay, great. Stop, two minutes they have to wait. Pack it, oh there's packs, see I don't smoke, I forget some of these steps. They had to pack the pack too uh, and they got the cellophane open. Okay, take out a cigarette, finally. Stop, they have to wait two minutes. And this goes on and every two minutes they ha they're writing down uh, how intense their cravings are and how much they wanna smoke. But other than that, they're not allowed to do anything. Take a cigarette out, stop, two minutes. Look at the cigarette, stop, two minutes. Smell the cigarette, stop, two minutes. Put the cigarette in your mouth, stop, two minutes. Take out a lighter, look at it, stop, two minutes. This went on for over an hour. Nobody was actually allowed to light the cigarette, okay. So here's what the, I didn't tell you what the actual intervention was yet. Half of them before this happened had been taught a technique called surfing the urge in which you learn to pay attention to the physical discomfort of wanting something, you give it your full attention, and you trust that you can tolerate those physical sensations, and if you just wait with patience, they will go away. That any craving, any emotion will eventually pass if you can just breathe and wait, wait it out, that you don't have to act on every impulse or emotion. Uh, so that's the technique they were taught. They were surfing the urge. They were imagining those cravings as a wave that they were getting on and they were just gonna breathe and they knew that it would eventually end, just like a wave. Before I tell you the results of the study, let me just give you the food one. The food went a little bit different. They took people who had problems with self-control around food, especially sweets, gave them a clear container of Hershey's Kisses, transparent container, and they had to carry that box of Hershey's Kisses around with them for 48 hours and were not allowed to eat a single one and they were all carefully marked, a little pin scratch so that the researchers would know if they ate them and restocked it, which would not be cool. And they were taught the same technique about how to handle cravings, how to surf the urge, allow yourself to feel the craving and yet remember you don't need to act on it and the craving will go away eventually. Okay, so the results in this study, the smokers who had been taught how to surf the urge in that, that one hour torture test, um, um, they ended up reducing their cigarette smoke by 40% in the very next week, uh, even though the researchers had not asked them to. The control group did not reduce their cigarettes at all. And interestingly, in the, the people who had learned to surf the urge, there was now no longer a connection between psychological stress and smoking, which is actually, the, that's the main connection for a lot of people who are trying to quit. They're stressed out, they're anxious, and so they need a cigarette. And in this particular group with this intervention, uh, it cut that link between stress and giving in. 
probably because they had a tool for dealing with difficult feelings and emotions. In this study, the people who had trouble with self-control around food, if they were taught to surf the urge, zero had a single Hershey's kiss over the entire 48 hours. Whereas those who'd been given other strategies, including distraction, uh, ended up much more likely to give in and also really stressed out about it. Um, so these are just two different examples of how surfing the urge um, can give us a lot of willpower for the things where we need willpower. You know, a lot of times I hear people talk about how important it is to build good habits, but the reality is sometimes you need strength to do something difficult, and there's no habit in the world that's going to make you not want a cigarette when you see it, or want a donut when you see it, or make you want to avoid something because you're anxious. There's a real impulse and a real feeling that you need to deal with, and this power of acceptance seems to be the best strategy for dealing with these difficult emotions, these difficult thoughts, and these difficult cravings. And any attempt to kind of push them away or get rid of them backfires, but being able to ride them out and imagine them as passing experiences that you don't need to act on has been shown to help a lot of different willpower challenges, including the kind of anxiety that leads us to not do things we know we should do, intrusive thoughts. You know, that's a real willpower challenge. Sometimes our mind goes places we don't want it to go to memories or to things we're imagining or to negative thoughts about ourselves and others. And research shows you can apply the same technique to a negative thought without having to act on it. It's been shown to improve weight loss. Uh, it actually, this, this technique of learning how to accept your own cravings tripled the long-term one-year weight loss success rate among people who were in a really standard weight loss uh, program. If you want to apply this technique to any willpower challenge yourself, here's what that small intervention would look like for yourself. Here's what people were taught in, uh, in both of those studies. And the first is this mindfulness to allow yourself to feel what you're feeling or think what you're thinking and to actually attend to the experience rather than immediately try to escape it. So if you're hungry, actually notice like what does hunger feel like in my body? Or if you're anxious, what does anxiety feel like in my body right now? Uh, and then to actually just breathe, breathe it out. Use the breath as a source of stability. You know what you're feeling, take a few breaths, and then broaden your attention out and look for the first opportunity to recommit to your goal. That's what they were taught in both the smoking study and in the Hershey's Kiss study. And it's a technique that you can practice. It takes like 30 seconds and, uh, and it can help with any sort of willpower challenge. Five willpower rules. And I would just invite you to think if you heard anything today that might be relevant to your willpower challenge to give yourself this short dose, this small dose intervention and, uh, and see how it works. So those five strategies, one is to train your willpower physiology by meditating, by sleeping, by exercising, or by eating a diet that's gonna sustain your energy. Um, forgive yourself the next time you have a willpower power setback, make friends with your future self, kind of think about the future in a way that feels real, predict your failure, even though it's really nice to imagine success, really get interested in the process of how you fail, and then finally think about surfing the urge when you are facing temptation.